I have come here to end your empire and free these apes from your tyranny. <laughs> you tell me, do you think I need these pitiful creatures to run my empire? Allow me to show you something. As you can see, I do not need those darn dirty apes. It is a kindness that I allow them to survive. I give them work so they believe their life has purpose. All I truly want from them is their gold. Gold? Ha! What gold? Have you not seen the result of Gravoria's planet-wide radiation? When living beings die, their bodies are transmuted into solid gold. The apes are useless. I send my minions to harvest more gold from my empire. You are a cruel, heartless monster. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> That scene always makes me woozy. Hey, Patrick, I think we need a break. on your average elevator? Still, it's even worse when you press all the buttons on a real elevator. People get so annoyed when you do that. Click, click, and make all this in 3D with those computers or something. But no computers here. No, heck no. I still don't know how to work one of those damn contraptions.
set construction 101. To make it look nice, you gotta make it look shiny. That's the secret ingredient, you know. production babies while making this movie. One of them was even named after one of the characters, Macmillan J. Peters. <laughs> skydiving myself, but I have a crippling fear of heights. Wow, really? So, was this movie your way of tackling that fear head on? Ha! <laughs> nah, this movie is what gave me my fear of heights. By the end of it, I was directing scenes with my eyes closed to keep from getting panic attacks. Now it's all starting to make sense. Oh, well, let them roam the island. 
But your eminence, I want some of my hybrid specimens. That does put me like turning Gregor Mendel's teacup into soup and forcing him to drink it. Mendel, Mendel, doctor. I gave you gold to spawn me a dinosaur army, and I expect my army to kill things. But whatever you command, it is so hard to do real science under these conditions. The stop motion team was so stellar, and they worked for peanuts. They really did. I just couldn't get enough of them. The script called for a lot of dinosaurs here, so I said, hey, let's set the record. I told the team I wanted a minimum of 30. Of course, we found out later we were absolutely nowhere near the world record. But I didn't have the heart to tell them. I made them eat some fake plaques and sent them their way. <laughs> Similar lightning switch. Searching. Available rocket ship detected. People wondered why we had that third lower exhaust pipe on Robot, even though it didn't shoot flames when he hovered. It was purely a matter of necessity. Wearing a suit that takes hours to put on? I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go.
station. Space, the final frontier, where no man has gone before. These are the voyages of... Whoops, sorry, I got kind of carried away with something else there. Because when she says that line, it almost sounds like she's insulting Dick's masculinity. None of us caught it in the filming. But at the premiere, I saw the reaction on Jonathan's face. <laughs> Whoops. scenes went on a little too long in my movie, that there wasn't enough story and exposition. Uh, excuse me, what kind of movie did you decide to go see? An action movie, you say? Last time I checked, dialogue wasn't a movie genre. Where did those clones originate?
official stance is Yes, the henchmen can breathe without helmets on. I get asked that a lot by people trying to find plot holes. And that's your answer, people. It's not a plot hole. It's not like we ran out of budget and couldn't afford to buy more glass bubbles. No, sir, that's nonsense. than I ever imagined. My father never told me about this place. Ah! That is because he does not know it exists, my dear. He supplies me this gold. Little does he know, I divert most of that gold into my own experiments. Experiments like my army of atomic monkeys. <laughs> ah, the doctor. After the first few outbursts, I tried firing him. He was heartbroken, devastated. And then the next day, he'd just show back up to work. <laughs> like nothing happened. <sighs> I couldn't bear to fire the man twice. That look on his face the first time. Oh, well, I just made it work. In retrospect, he was a bit creepy, though. Always hanging around the ladies' makeup trailer. So, so creepy. Oh, well, who can blame him? We had some really nice eye candy on the set. <laughs> but he was creepy.
Invisible men are always cool. And the great thing is, they're easy to cast because of obvious reasons. Ha! <laughs> Actually, that's what I wish I was when my ex-wife or IRS come knocking at my door. Uh, forget I said that. Patrick, we've been recording for a while. Can we take a break now? Well, we're a little behind, but sure, let's take a fiber. Oh, man. Man alive, that feels great to get those headphones off. Whew. Whew. That's a load off my shoulders. Which is uh, it's actually a load off my head, which is a load off my shoulder. But anyway, you know, I got to level with you. Most of the cast, not that great. Worst acting I've seen, probably. Yeah, we'd shoot some scenes a dozen times just to get it right. Hey, I want to... Hey, you're not recording any of this, right? Oh, uh, nah, it's all good. I'll just make a note to edit this stuff out. actor just pick up a film reel? So that's what happened to all my missing footage. Oh, how did I ever let this make it into the final cut?